Okay, in this segment we're going to talk about something called buoyancy and stability. This pretty much answers the question why fully or partially submerged bodies float. Okay, so this concept is if you follow the segments that we have introduced, the forces, especially the in the z direction, actually we have the formula for this. Okay, so there's nothing new in here. To me, the hardest thing is spelling this out. Okay, and if you think that's not enough, go ahead and see the principle that I'm going to introduce. It's called Archimedes. Good luck spelling that out as well. The rest it will be fine. Okay? So let me write what I just said. Well, not the spelling part. Why? This is what I'm going to answer. Fully submerged. Or let's call this partially submerged bodies float. Okay, let me answer this in this way. Let's have a free surface over here and I have, I don't know, something like this, a, a box, rectangular, cube rather, right? I'm drawing in 2D. So this is Y pointing up is Z. Okay, so what will be the net force on this? Okay, so it may look unconventional that it is actually the force is going to go up because it's kind of like the opposite to solve mechanics, right? If I leave something, usually it goes down in the negative z direction. But I'm saying that this is going to go up. Why? Well, let's, let me explain. Okay. I need to call a few high dimensions. So let's call this h1 and let's call this h2. Okay. So now let's look at the pressure distribution on the right and on the left of this cube. You may realize that the pressure is going to start from here and then it's going to go down. It's going to increase linearly, right? And it's going to increase linearly like this as well. So if I look over here, you will see that this will be the force, or rather the pressure distribution on that face. So if I do a similar analogy on the other side, you will see that, well, I hope that my slope is the same because that's what I'm trying to show you. Um, well, okay, here we go again. The right and left is not the same. This looks bigger. But the point is, in reality, as the slope is the same, the height is the same, let's say I pick an arbitrary height over here, the, f the pressure over here will be pushing this way, the pressure over here will be pushing with this way, and the, amp the magnitude will be the same. So my point is that they will cancel each other, right and left, it will be quite sta stable, I'm good to go. How about the top and the bottom? And that's where it gets into the buoyancy force. So on the top, let's say that, remember, pressure always pushes it in, right? It's pushing. It's not, it's a compressive, right? It's positive. So then let's let's go ahead and calculate this. So this will be, well, rho g, or I can call the specific weight, right? Times h1. That's the pressure and actually uniform, right? Specific weight of whatever I'm traveling in times the h1 will be the pressure, not the force, pressure pushing it down. And if I multiply this by the area, and the area is basically Let's call this W, which is the width of this, and I'm going to call this D. D is into the page, or into the screen in this case, so that's the depth into the page, okay? All right, that's fine. Let's do the same analogy for here as well. So what will happen here is rho G times H2, right? Because I'm H2 from the free surface, and area will be the same. You can see that the width times into the screen depth, okay? All right, so my question is, Look here. So these are multiplying both. Rho G is constant or specific weight. Gamma is constant. So you can see over here. So this is H1 pushing it down. And this is H2 which is larger. You can see with the red font over here. So basically this is pushing this up more than this is pushing it down. Right? So then this is going to go up because there's a more force in the positive Z direction. Let me see whether I can get a formula here. That would be nice because I want to talk quantitatively not qualitatively you know let let me uh, you know one is push this is pushing it up this is pushing it down with a lower amount so let me get the uh, net force from this angle so in order to do that you can see that this is aligned with the positive z this is aligned with the negative z that's why i'm going to write it this way specific weight times h2 w width times depth minus Specific weight, the same specific weight, H1, W, D. 
right? So you can see these three terms are common, so I can get myself specific weight W D times H2 minus H1, right? So what is H2 minus H1? It's right here, right? That is the H, H of this block. Okay, so what I get myself is specific weight times W times D times H. What is W times D times H? Well, that is the volume of... So then, as you can see in here, that I get myself a fairly nice equation. So as you can see here, this buoyant force becomes specific weight of the fluid times the displaced volume. Okay, you can see from here, we derived it for you. But if you want to write it, basically what I just said is the Archimedes, it's a Greek scientist principle. Basically what he says is, I'm going to simply write it for you, the buoyant force, which is the Fp, acting on a solid submerged or partially submerged in a fluid is equal to weight of the displaced fluid. So something in here that this, this terminology is used a lot in this buoyant force, displaced fluid. What I mean by that is this, so think about it. So I, I'm inserting this box over here. So if this box was not there, this whole thing was occupied by the liquid that I have in this particular case, right? So this is now displaced, so this is gone away. I don't have any more water over here, it's just a solid. That's what they mean. So it's a fancy way of saying that this is the volume of it. The thing though, important is if this is Partially submerged, so let's say that over here I have a box like this, right? So in that case, displaced weight of the fluid will be only this. You're not going to include that part, okay? Because that's not really what I'm after. Buoyant force passes through the centroid of the displaced volume. Okay, you can see now we displace fluid, displaced volume. You see what I mean? We, we, we tend to use the displaced uh, often. Okay, and this is called the center of buoyancy. You can guess this one as well. Okay, so this is important. This can be the same point as the centroid. This can be completely different. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about the hydrodynamically stable or non-stable. So what I want to do is, let's say, my drawings are not the best, but I'll, I'll do. So I have kind of like a ship over here, okay? So this is the, you know, actually it's not too bad, right? So let's take a look at it. If my weight is down here, right? Let's say that I'm, I'm carrying oil over here, okay? It's full. So what will happen is the weight will be down here. The buoyant force will be like this. It will be above the weight. So what will happen is, let's say that, you know, with the wind and all, my ship gets some angle to it, right? So it's like this now. Obviously, I'm exaggerating the angle. So what will happen? So now you can see this. The weight will still be over there. It will be like this. But the buoyant force, due to the, it's leading towards the left-hand side over here, buoyant force is now going to move like this. Okay, so let's look at the next net effect. Let's look at the moment, right? So what happens is the ship, if it wants to overturn, it needs to go this way, right? Now look at this, how weight is. So now weight is stabilizing this, and actually look at the buoyant force. It's pushing it up so it goes back to the original shape. So that's why this is called hydrodynamically stable. So this is where you wanna be, okay? So now I will give you a second example. In the second example, what I do is you can think of this as, um, let's say like this, right? I'm trying to replicate the same and I have something like this, right? But this time around, I put a bunch of load up here. Okay, I have a bunch of load up here. I'm loading this up, okay? So what will happen is if I have a bunch of weight over there, where the weight is applied, it will go up over here. So that will be W. But the buoyant force, if you think about it, they are similar. Now the buoyant force is going to be like this, right? This is the F, buoyant. So let's 
analyze this case when it has an angle to it because of the wind and all, right? Let's say this is the water surface and I have some type of an angle over here and this is like that, this, and I bench a load over here, right? Now let's see this case. What happens is now the weight is up top, right? If the weight is up top, now the weight is the center of the weight is going to move to this direction, right? So it's going to be like this now. Because look at the where the weight is. The weight will be like that. And then buoyant force will be this way. Because think, take a look at it. It's, it's the center of the displaced fluid. So it's here. It's, good. it's over here, not over there. Okay? So then this will push it up. So now let's see what's going on. The, the, the container now wants to go this way. Right? You're trying to prevent it. But look at what the weight does. It also pulls me down. It also pulls me down. How about F? Well, now F is also pulling it down over, so it can easily overturn. That's why to these things we, we call hydrodynamically unstable. Okay? So this is important. This is unstable, this is stable. So you always want to put the load at the bottom. Okay, now at the top. Top heavy is no good. You know this the expression as well. It's top heavy, right? So now in the next uh, segment, I will solve a question or two to illustrate how these concepts are applied.